All right. <clears throat> I remember hearing about a story several years ago. It's kind of a tragic story about a British teenager who developed permanent blindness and permanent hearing loss as a result of an extremely unhealthy diet. For several years, he had eaten almost exclusively nothing but Pringles potato chips, French fries, white bread, and cured ham. That was it. And even though he appeared at a glance from the outside to be reasonably healthy, you know, he was height and weight proportionate, his eating habits were slowly taking their toll on his body, and he will forever have vision and hearing loss. It's irreversible. And it can all be traced back to his lack of a balanced diet. Simply put, if he had eaten just a small amount of fruit or green vegetables on a regular basis, or taken some kind of a multivitamin, this wouldn't have happened. Another story that has been reported lately is that over the past decade, teen depression has increased at an alarming rate, especially amongst those that are in middle school. And a study at the University of Alabama has uncovered a connection between depression and a diet that is high on fast food and low on fruits and vegetables. Another contributing factor to the rise in depression could also be the, the lack of chronic, or, or, or the chronic lack of sleep uh, that, that teenagers have, which is, which is pretty much the way teenagers live these days. Now, depression is a problem that should be taken seriously. And it's amazing to think that the first line of defense could be something as practical as eating more fruits and vegetables, as eating a more balanced diet and getting the proper amount of sleep. Now certainly, that's not all that there is to it. But the results of this study should probably be considered. These stories remind us that there are some principles of physical health that are so basic, so fundamental, that no one can ever claim an exemption. No one will ever move past the need for proper nutrition. Doesn't matter how young you are, or how energetic you feel, or how healthy you appear to be to those around you, you're as tied to these fundamental principles of health and nutrition as much as anyone else. The rules are the same for everyone. This same truth applies to our spiritual lives as well. The process of spiritual growth is identical for every believer, whether you've been following Christ for 50 years or whether you were baptized just this last week. Whether you're a mega church celebrity pastor, or whether you serve in obscurity at a very small church. The rules of spiritual health are the same across the board for everyone. It all comes down to the basics. For that reason, we started looking several weeks ago at ways to get back to the basics in our spiritual lives. We're looking at principles and disciplines that you'll never outgrow, no matter how old you are spiritually. No matter how far you may advance in the Christian life. These habits must form the foundation for all that you do. They're like the fruit and vegetables of the balanced Christian lifestyle. The last time we met, which to me seems like a month ago. I know it wasn't. It was just a couple of weeks ago or so. Um, but I talked about what the Christian life is supposed to be. And I said that it's a journey with a destination, a race 
that we're designed to win and a walk that we're called to take each and every day. The objective is that Christ remains front and center in everything that we do. Tonight, I want to take a look at the role Scripture plays in our daily life. Now, I don't know how it was for you, but when I first became a Christian, I, I was amazed at how that dusty old book that, that I had mostly just carried to church and back with me when I went, how it had suddenly come alive how it had suddenly become relevant to my daily life. It spoke to me every time that I read it. And I kept wondering, where has this thing been? Why hadn't I read it before? 45 plus years later, the Bible still speaks to me. There have been times when I've foolishly neglected it and I've paid the price nothing gets a Christian off course more like ignoring the Bible and nothing can get you back on track like picking it up again so tonight I want to talk about five yes five don't panic I know my sermons generally have three points, okay? We're going with five tonight, okay? Uh, but these are five Bible study strategies that might help Scripture come alive for you like it never has before or come alive for you again. And if you follow even just a few of these guidelines on a consistent basis, your spiritual life will continue to move forward in the direction of a deeper walk with Christ. And before you ask, no, I have not mastered all of these in my own life. Okay? So here's the first habit that I encourage you to pick up. Choose a focus verse. I did this several years ago, uh, back when I was in apartment ministry. It was actually when I first started it, so that's been a long time ago. And, and I've gotten out of the habit of doing it. But in looking at getting back to the basics, as I, as I started uh, looking at this little series that we're doing, it, it, I, I, I remembered doing this, and I realized how much I enjoyed it when I did it, and I want to get back to doing it again. I'd been reading scripture, and I came across this passage in Philippians 2, 3, and 4, which says, Do nothing out of rivalry or conceit, but in humility consider others as more important than yourselves. Everyone should look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. And, and I took that verse, and that's what I used as the basis for the apartment ministry that I was involved in, that I was doing. And, 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 and that verse just kind of jumped out at me as I was reading through Scripture one day. And it spoke to me on such a deep level that I had decided that I wanted to read that verse again the next day. And then the next day, and I wanted to become familiar with it and, and let it speak to me on a daily basis. So I decided to do that. I decided to start reading it every day. And I did that for a year. And I realized that I needed to, to hear this verse and what it said every day and apply it to my life every day. I needed to meditate on it. And, and I needed to remind myself that, that everything, that was gone, everything that was going on, it wasn't just about me. I wasn't the center here. 
I needed to start putting others first. So after I read this passage for about a year, I came across others that I had decided I wanted to focus on as well. I wanted to learn about them, dig deep in them, and, and, and see what they had to say as I went through my Christian life. So, as you go through the process, understand that, that you need to find verses. If you do this, you need to find your verses that speak to you. Something that just really jumps out at you. They may not speak to anyone else at all the way they speak to you and the way that they touch you. These are verses that are between God and you. They're verses that touched you on a very personal level. And when that happens, why let it only touch you once? Keep meditating on that verse and find out all that God wants you to out of his word, out of that verse. And in the process, you're going to find that through repeating, repeatedly studying this verse and reading it every single day, the same verse over and over and over again, you'll also find that you're, that you're memorizing that verse. And that's never really a bad thing at all. So choose a verse that speaks to you. Write it on an index card. Put it where you can see it every day. And each day as you begin the day, review this verse and take a moment to think about what it means. And then throughout the day, as you have the opportunity, think about that verse again. My wife will write a verse out on an index card and tape it to the mirror in the bathroom. And that's her verse, and that way every time she goes in to the bathroom to look in the mirror, and especially when she's getting ready in the morning and stuff, that verse is right there, and she keeps looking at it. She keeps seeing what it says and meditating on it. And you don't have to keep the same verse, certainly, for an entire year. It could just be a month or two before, before a new verse comes to your attention. But, but you do want to review it and meditate on it daily. Let it take a hold of your thoughts so that it can work its way into your heart and so that it can be expressed then in your actions as you go throughout your day. King David said in Psalm 119.11, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. That's the power of a focus verse. That's why I encourage you to start developing that habit if you don't already have it. Again, understand that this is a verse that has spoken to you. Not one that's spoken to me, but one that's spoken to you. So let it continue to speak to you as God continues his work inside of you. And here's the second strategy for maximizing scripture in your daily life. Read for them Psalms, and or Proverbs every day. Now, all the books of the Bible are wonderful and powerful and meaningful. Uh, uh, of the 66 fully inspired books of the Bible, these two are probably my favorite. Okay? Why are they my favorites? For me, Proverbs speaks about the life that I hope to have. And, 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 and the man that I want to be. Because it teaches the principles of sound wisdom and successful living. On the other hand, the Psalms often speak to the life that I have. With all of its faults and with all of its frailty. David, who wrote most of the Psalms, was a great man. Scripture says that he was a man after God's own heart. And yet in the Psalms, you see that he often struggled with discouragement and disappointment and fear and envy and frustration 
and temptation. His struggles are often my struggles. And I'm sure they're probably your struggles as well. When you read the Psalms, you'll find yourself saying quite often, that's me. That's my life that he's talking about. Psalms is like the prayer book of the Bible. But I want you to know that these prayers are not filled with some kind of just flowery speech. They're written from the depths of the soul of a man who was struggling with life. And they lead to answers. The answers that we need to hear. Psalm 13, verses 1 and 2 says, Lord, how long will you forget me? Forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long will I store up anxious, anxious concerns within me? Agony in my mind every day. How long will my enemy dominate me? And you read that and you think, man, I've been there. I am there right now. And, and, and when he goes on to say that he will continue to trust God through all of the feelings that he has and that he will continue to choose to rejoice and sing for God's faithfulness in the past, you think, that's exactly what I need to do as well. So I would recommend that each day you spend just a few minutes, five minutes, however long, reading a psalm or reading a section of the Proverbs and see what there is for you to learn from life. And here's the third strategy for maximizing your connection with God's Word in your daily life. Have a daily devotional. The most important lesson that I learned when I became a new believer was how to have a daily quiet time. The youth minister in the church that I grew up in taught us consistently how to have a daily quiet time. At least once a month, he would work that in. To, to our Wednesday night prayer meetings, the, the, the youth meetings that we had as well. That one habit, more than any other, will help you to stay focused and at times get refocused on the basics of Christian living. And it's a very simple process. You begin with a short prayer. Lord, speak to my heart from your word. Let me hear what I need to hear from you today. And then you read a passage of scripture. You can start with any book of the Bible that you want. If it's something that's new for you, I'd recommend that you start with Galatians and work through 1 John. But, but you can choose whatever order you want to do. Just, just pick a brief section of scripture and read through it two or three times. Make it a short passage so that it's easy to read more than once. And as you read, ask yourself, what is God saying to me today? Is there, and I think I have this in your notes, is there a sin I need to confess, a promise I need to claim, an action I need to take, a command I need to obey, or an example I need to follow. Now, if you'll notice, the acrostic there spells out space, if you had trouble remembering it. Okay? And you can think of me in Star Trek, and that'll get you right to space, okay? <laughs> you might want to have a notebook with you when you're doing all of this, so that you can take notes on what God may be telling you to do. Maybe the passage is, is about gratitude and you'll realize that God is telling you to say thank you to someone in particular. Jot that down. 
Because if you're anything like me, it'll come to your mind right then. But five minutes later, boop, it's gone. And you won't remember it. Or maybe the passage is about criticism. And you realize that God is telling you to be less critical to those that are in your sphere of influence that day. Or maybe the passage is about redeeming the time. And you realize that God is telling you to shut off your phone or your TV for a few hours. I think you'll be amazed at how the Holy Spirit speaks to you in a very specific way when you spend time in his word every day. That's exactly what he promises to do. In Isaiah 50, verse 4, he says, Morning by morning he awakens me and opens my understanding to his will. And here's the fourth habit that I encourage you to develop. Read the Bible like a story. Some people like to follow a daily reading plan. They, they, they read three chapters from the Old Testament and one chapter from the New Testament. And if you do that, then you can read through the Bible in about a year. That works for you great. Okay? An alternative plan is to start at the beginning and just read for as long as you like or as long as you have time for and, and, and read it more or less like you're reading a novel. Okay? There are Bibles that are out there that are, that are and I'm trying to think of the word now, um, uh, chronographical Bibles that, that tell, that they have all scripture, but is, is in there chronologically how it happened in time. And, and, and so it kind of jumps all around as you read through it. Sometimes you may read several chapters in one sitting other days you may have uh, only have time or or the attention if you will for only a page or two but read whatever you can not out of some kind of a legalistic obligation but simply because you want to follow the story like you're reading a novel in following this step i recommend that you choose a version of scripture that is easy for you to read. Now, if that's the King James Version, cool. Um, <laughs> go for it. Okay? Um, but there are other versions out there that, that are much more readable in today's language. Um, the easy to read version, uh, the, the, the New Living Translation. Uh, I don't re recommend actually studying out of the message, but as far as just reading, if all you're doing is just trying to read story-like, the message is a version that you can use. But it, 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 that is a paraphrase. That is not an actual translation, so I don't recommend actually doing your Bible study out of that. Okay? Uh, but if you don't want to go buy those in, in, on your phone or online, if you go to BibleGateway.com, just about every translation is there, and you can find it and read through it. Speaking of being online, you can also find podcasts and downloadable recordings of Scripture, kind of like an audio book. I actually have, and I don't even know how many CDs. I think there's 20 CDs. I've got a version of of the Bible in read dramatically uh, in, and I think it's the New Living Translation um, and, and I mean it has sound effects and everything with it and you can find those things out there that you can just listen to just to listen to the Bible as it is a story okay and an and interesting event can take place as you're doing all of that um, for example, in the book of Nehemiah, after the wall of Jerusalem has been completed, all of the people assembled near one of the gates in the city, and Nehemiah appoints Ezra to read the scripture. The Bible says in Nehemiah 8.3, says he read it aloud from daybreak 
till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women, and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. That was kind of the 5th century version of listening to an audiobook. Everybody came together and they just stood there and listened to Ezra as he read the law. Here's the fifth habit that I encourage you to develop. Study the Bible like a student. And in this habit, we need to follow the example of Ezra. In Ezra 10, verse, or 7, verse 10, it says, Now Ezra had determined in his heart to study the law of the Lord, obey it, and teach its statutes and ordinances in Israel realistically speaking you may not be able to do that particular step every day but work up to doing it at least a couple of times a week and and and, and I would encourage you to do that that's not a bad idea okay I'm talking about sitting down at a desk taking time to actually sit down at, at, at a table or a desk or whatever for 30 or 45 uninterrupted minutes with a few different Bible translations, a couple of commentaries if you have them, and, 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 and read through a section, a passage in all of those translations and through the commentaries to see what they have to say. And do that as you just work through a book of the Bible. The goal here isn't speed. The goal is depth. The goal is to learn all that you can about the Bible one book at a time. And that means that you can take your time as you learn about the background, the context, the theories of authorship, the use of certain languages and phrases within the text, and on and on. If you have time to do this every day, great. If not, Making time at least once or twice a week to study scripture in depth can reap powerful rewards in your spiritual life. When I'm going through in here, when I've gone through specifically books of the Bible, I, I, there are times that I tell you, okay, I'm going to read this out of this translation because I like it better. And that's what I do. I read whatever passage I'm looking at, I read that in many different translations. And then the one that, that, that makes the most sense to me, that's usually what I then read to you. And, and doing that, going, looking at different translations uh, can help you to understand exactly what a scripture may be saying. And then when you throw in commentaries on top of that, that just adds even more. Um, and, and, and even though there are some commentaries out there that are extremely deep, okay, they give you a whole lot of information sometimes that, that you don't think you need, but that's just a part of it. When someone says that their spiritual life is stalled and it's not what it used to be, this is the first trouble area that you need to look at. Are you spending time in the Word? Though there are a lot of areas of the Christian life that are essential to our spiritual health, and we're going to be looking at those here in the future, in the weeks to come, this is where we most often make our first mistake. When you neglect the Bible, it's like trying to survive on a diet of potato chips and french fries. Little by little, you'll lose your spiritual vision. Little by little, you'll no longer be able to hear his voice. The key verses that I've listed under the title at the very top of the page, I've saved for the end of my message. Because I think they talk about immersing ourselves in Scripture. 
God spoke these words to Moses a long time ago, but they apply to all of us. Deuteronomy 11, verses 18 through 21, says, Imprint these words of mine on your hearts and minds. Bind them as a sign on your hands, and let them be a symbol on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit in your house, and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, so that as long as the heavens are above the earth, your days and those of your children may be many in the land the Lord swore to give your fathers. What's he talking about here? He's talking about immersing yourself in Scripture. Immersing yourself in the Word of God. We need to know it like a scholar and live it like a saint. Today I've mentioned five different strategies for becoming more connected to Scripture. It may seem like a lot of territory to cover here, but it's not nearly as all-consuming as you may think it is. I encourage you to start where you're able to. Pick a couple of these ideas and begin there. And then let Scripture do its work in your life. The more time you spend in God's Word, the more Jesus remains front and center in your life. And Jesus front and center in your life? That's what the Christian life is all about. Take out your prayer sheets, if you would.